Hi everyone, and welcome back to Simple Understanding Channel. I'm excited to have you here for our CLTD Certified in Logistics, Transportation and Distribution Preparation course. This is another module of the nine module series, and I hope you're enjoying the journey so far. To make your studies easier, I've put together some great resources that you can download from the description below. First, a 600 plus page comprehensive ebook guide that covers every aspect of CLTD, from foundational logistics principles to advanced strategies. Packed with real world examples, case studies, and insights from leading companies, this resource provides the depth you need to master the curriculum. Second, practice with 2,500 questions covering both theoretical and scenario-based topics. Each question includes a detailed answer explanation, helping you grasp core concepts and practical applications. Third, access 1,850 flashcards with essential terms and definitions, organized by module for quick reviews and easy reinforcement of key concepts. This study package provides everything you need to excel in CLTD. From comprehensive content explanations to practical test taking strategies. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Be sure to check out the CLTD playlist for the previous modules and stay tuned for the upcoming ones. Are you ready? Let's get started. Module 2 Logistics Network Design, which consists of two sections, which are Section A, Facilities Planning and Network Design. Section B, Risk Management. Let's begin with Section A, Facilities Planning and Network Design, with 15 detailed points. This section explores the strategic importance of facilities planning and network design, focusing on optimal facility placement, network configuration, and the impact of these decisions on efficiency and customer satisfaction. Each point includes in-depth explanations and real-world examples. Overview. Facilities planning and network design involve determining the best locations for warehouses, distribution centers, and other logistics facilities to optimize service levels, minimize costs, and support the company's strategic goals. This section covers how companies evaluate geographic and economic factors, assess customer needs, and implement technology to build an efficient logistics network that meets market demands. Real-life examples illustrate the critical impact of effective facilities planning and network design on supply chain performance and customer satisfaction. Key Topics 1. The Importance of Strategic Facility Location Explanation Strategically locating facilities close to key markets or suppliers reduces transportation costs, shortens lead times, and enhances customer service. The location of a facility can significantly impact a company's ability to meet customer demand effectively. Real company example. Nike places its distribution centers close to major markets in North America and Europe to reduce delivery times and minimize shipping costs, ensuring quick product availability for retailers and customers. Expansion. Factors such as proximity to transport hubs, labor availability, and regional demand patterns influence facility location. By strategically situating facilities, companies like Nike align logistics capabilities with customer expectations, ensuring timely product delivery while controlling operational costs. 2. Balancing cost and service level in network design. Explanation. Effective network design balances cost efficiency with high service levels. This balance is essential for achieving competitive pricing without compromising the speed and reliability of service. Real company example. Walmart uses a hub and spoke network with regional distribution centers supplying stores within a specific radius. This approach minimizes transportation costs and enables rapid restocking supporting Walmart's everyday low pricing model. Expansion. Balancing cost and service levels requires a detailed analysis of transport routes, inventory levels, and customer locations. By optimizing facility placement, 
Companies can reduce shipping expenses while maintaining high service standards, enhancing both profitability and customer loyalty. Three, facility size and capacity planning. Explanation. Planning facility size and capacity ensures that the network can handle current and future demand. Overestimating capacity leads to wasted resources, while underestimating it can result in stockouts and delayed deliveries. Real company example. Amazon builds large fulfillment centers with modular layouts, allowing for expansion as demand increases, ensuring it can handle peak periods without compromising order fulfillment. Expansion. Capacity planning includes forecasting demand, evaluating seasonal fluctuations, and assessing storage needs. By designing flexible facilities that can adapt to growth, companies like Amazon avoid constraints that could impact service during peak times. 4. Warehouse Layout and Design Optimization Explanation An optimized warehouse layout improves picking, packing, and shipping efficiency, reducing labor costs and speeding up order processing times. Effective layout design supports high throughput and accurate order fulfillment. Real company example. Alibaba's warehouses use automated sorting and racking systems that optimize storage and picking paths, speeding up order fulfillment in high demand periods like singles day. Expansion. Warehouse design includes factors such as aisle layout, storage configurations, and use of automation. A well-designed layout reduces bottlenecks and maximizes space utilization, enhancing operational efficiency and supporting fast, accurate order processing. 5. Proximity to Transport Infrastructure Explanation Locating facilities near transport infrastructure, such as highways, ports, and airports, improves accessibility and reduces transportation costs, making it easier to move goods efficiently within the supply chain. Real company example. Toyota's North American distribution centers are situated close to major highways and railroads, allowing efficient transportation of parts and finished vehicles to dealerships. Expansion. Proximity to transportation infrastructure reduces transit times and lowers fuel costs, making logistics more economical. This strategic positioning enables companies to respond to customer demand quickly while controlling costs, supporting just-in-time delivery and reduced lead times. 6. Multi-Tiered Distribution Networks Explanation A multi-tiered distribution network includes multiple levels of facilities, such as central warehouses and regional distribution centers, to enhance responsiveness and lower costs. This setup allows companies to service different geographic areas efficiently. Real company example. Coca-Cola uses a multi-tiered network with production facilities supplying regional distribution centers, which then distribute to local bottlers or retailers, ensuring availability across diverse markets. Expansion. Multi-tiered networks provide flexibility enabling companies to balance inventory levels across regions and reduce lead times. This approach also helps manage distribution costs by ensuring products are positioned closer to demand sources, optimizing the flow from production to consumption. 7. Utilizing cross-docking to improve efficiency. Explanation. Cross-docking reduces storage needs by transferring goods directly from inbound to outbound trucks minimizing handling and warehousing time. This process supports fast-moving products, enhancing supply chain speed and cost-effectiveness. Real company example. Walmart's use of cross-docking allows goods to be transferred quickly from suppliers to stores, reducing inventory holding costs and accelerating restocking times. Expansion. Cross-docking requires precise coordination between suppliers and transport providers to ensure goods move seamlessly through facilities. This approach reduces the need for large storage spaces, cutting costs, and enhancing delivery speed, especially for high-demand items. 8. Leveraging Technology in Facility Management Explanation Technologies like Warehouse Management Systems, WMS, Automated picking and IoT sensors improve accuracy, 
reduce labor costs, and optimize space and facilities. Effective use of technology streamlines logistics and enhances data visibility. Real company example. Zara uses WMS and RFID technology in its warehouses to track inventory in real time, allowing quick response to stock replenishments and accurate order fulfillment. Expansion. Technology enhances facility management by enabling real-time tracking, automated sorting, and data analytics. By implementing advanced systems, companies can reduce errors, improve picking speed, and maintain optimal stock levels, supporting efficient facility operations. 9. Scalability in Network Design Explanation Scalable network designs allow facilities to grow or adapt to changes in demand, supporting long-term business growth without major redesigns. Scalability ensures flexibility to handle seasonal spikes and future expansion. Real company example. UPS strategically designs facilities that can add new processes or expand capacity during peak seasons, such as the holiday shipping period. Expansion. Scalable networks use modular designs, flexible space planning, and adaptable technology. This approach helps companies manage fluctuating demand and increase facility capabilities over time, minimizing disruption while meeting market needs. 10. Inventory Placement and Regional Demand Alignment Explanation Positioning inventory closer to demand centers reduces transportation time and costs. Aligning inventory with regional demand patterns ensures products are available where needed, supporting high service levels. Real company example. Apple places inventory in regional hubs around the world, allowing for faster fulfillment of orders across different countries and reducing cross-border shipping costs. Expansion. Inventory placement considers factors like lead time, demand variability, and transport costs. Proper alignment improves responsiveness, reduces stockouts, and enhances customer satisfaction by positioning products close to end users. 11. Cost-Benefit Analysis in Network Expansion Explanation Cost-benefit analysis helps companies determine the financial viability of expanding their logistics network. This analysis considers factors like construction, transportation, and labor costs, ensuring a sustainable expansion strategy. Real company example. Target conducted a cost-benefit analysis before expanding its distribution network to support online orders, ensuring each new facility met profitability and service level goals. Expansion. Cost-benefit analysis evaluates potential network changes, balancing upfront investment with expected returns. This process guides decisions on facility location, capacity, and technology, ensuring that network expansion aligns with long-term financial goals. 12. Adapting facilities for multi-channel distribution. Explanation. With the rise of e-commerce, facilities need to support both retail and online channels. Multi-channel distribution facilities allow companies to manage inventory and fulfill orders from a single location, improving efficiency. Real company example. Nike operates multi-channel distribution centers that fulfill orders for retail stores and online customers, streamlining inventory management and delivery processes. Expansion. Multi-channel facilities enable flexibility, allowing inventory to be allocated dynamically between online and physical stores based on demand. This approach optimizes inventory and reduces lead times, supporting seamless customer experiences across channels. 13. Building Sustainability into Facilities Design Explanation Sustainable facilities design minimizes environmental impact through energy efficiency, waste reduction, and renewable energy sources. Sustainability reduces operational costs and aligns with corporate responsibility goals. Real company example. IKEA designs energy-efficient distribution centers using solar panels and eco-friendly materials, reducing carbon emissions and lowering utility costs. Expansion. 
Sustainable facilities design includes energy-efficient lighting, water conservation, and waste recycling. Integrating sustainability supports cost savings, meets regulatory standards, and enhances brand reputation, making logistics networks environmentally and economically viable. 14. Utilizing regional hubs to enhance responsiveness. Explanation. Regional hubs bring inventory closer to customers, reducing lead times and improving service levels. These hubs support faster deliveries, particularly in high-demand regions, by holding buffer stock close to end users. Real company example. Amazon uses regional hubs in major cities to support same-day and next-day delivery for prime customers, ensuring fast, reliable service. Expansion. Regional hubs allow companies to respond quickly to orders, reduce last-mile delivery costs, and improve customer satisfaction. This approach requires careful planning of hub locations based on population density, demand patterns, and transport infrastructure. 15. Flexibility and Adaptability in Facility Design Explanation Facilities should be designed with flexibility to adapt to changing market demands, product lines, and technological advancements. Flexible facilities accommodate shifts in logistics needs without requiring complete redesigns. Real company example. Tesla's Gigafactories are designed to be reconfigured easily to accommodate new models, technologies, or production increases, supporting rapid innovation and growth. Expansion. Flexible design elements include modular layouts, adaptable equipment, and scalable technology infrastructure. By building adaptability into facilities, companies ensure their logistics network can evolve with business needs, reducing costs and maintaining competitiveness over time. Summary of Section A. Facilities Planning and Network Design Section A emphasizes the strategic planning required for facilities location, network design, and layout to support efficient logistics operations. By evaluating factors such as transport proximity, scalability, inventory placement, and sustainability, companies build a network that balances cost and service level. Real-world examples from Nike, Amazon, and Tesla highlight how effective facilities planning and network design enable companies to manage demand fluctuations, meet customer expectations, and optimize resource utilization. A well-designed logistics network is essential for achieving long-term growth, adaptability, and customer satisfaction. Let's take a small practice test for Section A. 1. Why is strategic facility location important? A to reduce transportation costs and improve customer service. B, to increase inventory holding times. C, to focus on remote locations. D, to increase lead times. Correct answer, A. Explanation. Strategic facility location reduces transportation costs, enhances customer service, and shortens lead times by placing facilities close to key markets or suppliers. 2. What is the goal of balancing cost and service level in network design? A. To improve inventory turnover only. B. To limit service levels. C. To achieve competitive pricing without sacrificing service quality. D. To reduce customer reach. Correct answer, C. Explanation. Balancing cost and service levels in network design ensures competitive pricing while maintaining high service standards. 3. How does facility size and capacity planning impact logistics? A. By limiting growth opportunities. B. By ensuring facilities can meet future demand. C. By reducing focus on service speed. D. By eliminating seasonal stock. Correct answer, B. Explanation. Facility size and capacity planning ensure facilities can handle demand fluctuations, avoiding stockouts or excess capacity. 4. Why is optimizing warehouse layout crucial in logistics? A. It improves picking and shipping efficiency, reducing costs. B. It reduces demand fluctuations. 
See, it focuses on supplier needs only. D. It increases storage costs. Correct answer. A. Explanation. An optimized layout improves picking and shipping efficiency, reducing labor costs and speeding up order fulfillment. 5. How does proximity to transport infrastructure benefit logistics? A. Increases warehouse costs. B. Improves accessibility, reducing transit times. C. Increases lead times. D. Decreases transportation demand. Correct answer. B. Explanation. Proximity to transportation hubs lowers transit times and transportation costs, making logistics more efficient. 6. What is a key advantage of a multi-tiered distribution network? It allows flexibility in managing regional demand. B. It reduces demand for inventory tracking. C. It limits distribution reach. D. It reduces transportation times only. Correct answer. A. Explanation. A multi-tiered network enables flexible inventory management across regions, lowering costs and improving responsiveness. 7. Why is technology integration important in facility management? A. It optimizes inventory tracking and enhances data visibility. B. It reduces facility flexibility. C. It limits customer service operations. D. It increases manual handling. Correct answer. A. Explanation. Technology like WMS and RFID systems improve tracking and visibility, enhancing accuracy and operational efficiency. 8. How does scalability support logistics network design? A. It reduces warehouse space. B. It allows facilities to adapt to demand changes over time. C. It limits service options. D. It reduces response time to market changes. Correct answer. B. Explanation. Scalable designs enable facilities to adjust capacity to meet fluctuating demand, supporting long-term flexibility. 9. Why is inventory placement critical in a logistics network? A. To increase transit times. B. To position products close to demand centers. C. To decrease efficiency of storage. D. To improve product design. Correct answer B. Explanation. Positioning inventory close to demand centers reduces transit times and enhances customer satisfaction by ensuring product availability. 10. What does a cost-benefit analysis achieve in network expansion? A. It limits service levels. B. It ensures that expansion aligns with profitability goals. C. It increases fuel costs. D. It reduces lead time accuracy. Correct answer B. Explanation. Cost-benefit analysis evaluates expansion options to ensure alignment with financial and service goals, supporting sustainable growth. Quick reminder, if you're finding this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with anyone who may benefit. Your support really makes a difference. Let's get back to it. Now with Section B, Risk Management, with 15 detailed points. This section delves into identifying assessing and mitigating risks within the logistics network, ensuring resilience and continuity in the face of disruptions. Each point includes an in-depth explanation and examples of how real companies handle these challenges. Overview. Risk management within logistics network design involves proactively identifying and addressing potential disruptions that could impact the efficiency, cost-effectiveness, or reliability of logistics operations. This section covers how companies assess various risks, from natural disasters and geopolitical issues to supplier reliability and transportation disruptions. By implementing robust risk management practices, companies can build resilience, ensuring continuity and maintaining customer satisfaction even under challenging conditions. Real-world examples illustrate strategies for risk identification, mitigation, and adaptation. Key Topics 1. 
Identifying key risks in logistics networks. Explanation. Identifying risks is the first step in risk management, helping companies recognize vulnerabilities in their logistics network. Key risks include transportation delays, supplier disruptions, natural disasters, and political instability, all of which can impact delivery schedules and costs. Real company example. Apple conducts extensive risk assessments across its global supplier network, identifying potential disruptions due to political instability, natural disasters, and economic changes in its supplier regions. Expansion. Risk identification includes evaluating geographic, economic, and industry-specific risks that could impact supply chain continuity. By understanding potential threats, companies can plan targeted mitigation strategies to reduce their impact on logistics operations. 2. Risk Assessment and Prioritization Explanation Risk assessment involves analyzing the likelihood and potential impact of identified risks. Prioritizing risks based on their severity and probability allows companies to focus resources on the most significant threats. Real company example. Coca-Cola uses a risk matrix to prioritize risks in its logistics network, focusing on high-impact risks like supplier failures and transportation delays that could disrupt production and distribution. Expansion. Risk assessment techniques include quantitative analysis, scenario planning, and expert consultations. Prioritizing risks helps companies allocate resources efficiently, ensuring they focus on the areas most likely to impact operations and customer satisfaction. 3. Building a risk-resilient supply chain. Explanation. A resilient supply chain can withstand or quickly recover from disruptions. Building resilience involves diversifying suppliers, implementing backup systems, and maintaining safety stock to ensure continuity. Real company example, Dell builds resilience into its logistics network by sourcing from multiple suppliers and regions, minimizing the risk of disruption from any single source. Expansion. Resilient strategies include maintaining alternative routes, setting up contingency plans, and using dual sourcing for critical components. By enhancing resilience, companies reduce downtime and minimize the impact of unforeseen events on logistics operations. 4. Geographic diversification of facilities. Explanation. Geographic diversification reduces dependency on a single region, minimizing the impact of regional disruptions, such as natural disasters or political issues. Diversified facilities improve network flexibility and response times. Real company example. Toyota maintains manufacturing and distribution facilities in multiple regions, reducing the risk of supply chain disruptions due to natural disasters, like the 2011 earthquake in Japan. Expansion. Geographic diversification involves placing facilities in regions with stable economic and environmental conditions. This approach balances supply chain risks and helps companies respond to local demand more effectively, maintaining service levels despite regional challenges. 5. Supplier Risk Management Explanation Supplier risk management assesses the reliability and financial stability of suppliers, ensuring they can meet demand even under challenging conditions. Evaluating supplier risks helps prevent disruptions in sourcing critical components. Real company example. Tesla monitors supplier risk by evaluating suppliers' financial health, production capacity, and contingency plans, ensuring stable sourcing for its electric vehicle components. Expansion. Supplier risk management includes regular audits, performance tracking, and establishing contingency suppliers. Strong supplier relationships and regular evaluations help companies detect early signs of risk, enabling proactive measures to secure the supply chain. 6. Inventory Buffering and Safety Stock Explanation Holding safety stock provides a buffer against unexpected demand spikes or supply chain delays. Inventory buffering ensures that companies can continue operations during disruptions minimizing the risk of stockouts. Real company example. 
Walmart maintains safety stock in its distribution centers to prevent stockouts during demand surges or supplier delays, ensuring consistent product availability in stores. Expansion. Safety stock levels are determined based on demand variability, lead times, and risk tolerance. By holding extra inventory, companies can maintain service levels even if suppliers face delays or transportation disruptions. 7. Risk mitigation through flexible transportation options. Explanation. Flexible transportation options allow companies to adapt quickly to route changes, carrier delays, or mode shifts. This flexibility reduces the impact of transportation disruptions, ensuring timely delivery. Real company example. Amazon uses multiple carriers and a mix of air, sea, and ground transportation, enabling it to adjust quickly in response to delays or capacity shortages. Expansion. Flexible transportation strategies include maintaining relationships with multiple carriers, using intermodal transport, and developing alternative routes. This approach ensures logistics networks can adapt to disruptions, minimizing delays, and maintaining customer satisfaction. 8. Risk Monitoring and Real-Time Data Explanation Real-time data enables companies to monitor logistics operations continuously, identifying potential issues before they escalate. Real-time visibility allows for quick responses, reducing the impact of disruptions. Real company example. UPS uses advanced tracking and real-time data analytics to monitor shipments and predict potential delays, allowing proactive adjustments to delivery schedules. Expansion. Risk monitoring includes using IoT sensors, GPS tracking, and predictive analytics to track shipments and assess risk in real time. Companies can use this data to make informed decisions quickly, maintaining smooth logistics operations and mitigating risks effectively. 9. Contingency Planning and Scenario Analysis Explanation Contingency planning prepares logistics networks for potential disruptions, outlining alternative actions to maintain service levels. Scenario analysis simulates various disruption scenarios, enabling companies to test and refine contingency plans. Real company example. FedEx develops detailed contingency plans for weather-related disruptions, including rerouting packages and activating backup distribution centers. Expansion. Contingency planning involves creating detailed response protocols for specific risks, such as natural disasters or supplier failures. By preparing for various scenarios, companies can minimize the operational impact of disruptions and ensure rapid recovery. 10. Financial hedging against risks. Explanation. Financial hedging reduces exposure to risks like fuel price fluctuations or currency exchange volatility which can impact logistics costs. Hedging strategies stabilize costs and protect against financial uncertainty. Real company example. Airlines, such as Southwest Airlines, hedge fuel prices to manage fuel cost volatility, ensuring stable operating costs despite market fluctuations. Expansion. Hedging strategies include currency futures, fuel hedging, and fixed rate contracts. By managing financial risks, Companies can maintain predictable logistics costs, avoiding price spikes that could disrupt budgeting and operations. 11. Cybersecurity in Logistics Networks Explanation Cybersecurity protects logistics networks from data breaches, hacking, and cyber attacks. Securing IT systems is critical as logistics networks become increasingly digital, relying on data for decision-making and real-time visibility. Real company example. Maersk, a global shipping giant, strengthened its cybersecurity measures after a ransomware attack disrupted its operations in 2017, ensuring future resilience against cyber threats. Expansion. Cybersecurity strategies include regular system audits, employee training, and multi-layered security protocols. Robust cybersecurity protects sensitive data, minimizes downtime, and secures logistics operations against growing digital threats. 
12. Regulatory Compliance and Risk Management Explanation Compliance with regulations, such as customs, environmental laws, and safety standards, minimizes legal and operational risks. Managing regulatory compliance ensures smooth cross-border logistics and reduces the risk of fines or delays. Real company example. Apple complies with international trade regulations to minimize delays in its global logistics network, ensuring consistent product availability across regions. Expansion. Regulatory compliance requires tracking changes in regulations, aligning logistics practices with legal standards, and maintaining clear documentation. Companies that prioritize compliance reduce delays, avoid penalties, and maintain a smooth flow of goods across borders. 13. Building redundancy in logistics networks. Explanation. Redundancy ensures backup options are available if primary resources fail, such as alternative facilities, carriers, or suppliers. Building redundancy strengthens resilience against disruptions. Real company example. Cisco has redundant suppliers and logistics pathways to ensure product availability even if one facility or supplier encounters issues. Expansion. Redundancy strategies include dual sourcing, alternative transport modes, and backup facilities. By incorporating redundancy, companies reduce the risk of complete stoppage in logistics operations, maintaining continuity during disruptions. 14. Developing an Organizational Culture of Risk Awareness Explanation An organizational culture of risk awareness empowers employees to identify and report potential risks, fostering proactive risk management across all levels of the logistics network. Real company example Toyota encourages a culture of risk awareness, with employees trained to identify risks and suggest improvements, enhancing overall resilience. Expansion. Building a risk-aware culture involves regular training, open communication, and incentivizing risk reporting. This culture helps detect risks early, improving the company's ability to respond quickly and effectively to disruptions. 15. Continuous improvement in risk management practices. Explanation. Continuous improvement in risk management ensures that practices remain effective and relevant as the logistics network evolves. Regularly updating risk strategies maintains resilience and prepares companies for emerging challenges. Real company example. FedEx reviews and updates its risk management practices annually, incorporating lessons from past disruptions to improve future resilience. Expansion. Continuous improvement includes evaluating the effectiveness of contingency plans, updating risk assessments, and adapting to new technologies. Regularly refining risk management practices helps companies remain resilient in the face of changing market dynamics, enhancing their ability to meet customer expectations. Summary of Section B, Risk Management. Section B focuses on identifying, assessing, and mitigating risks within logistics networks, ensuring that operations remain resilient under changing conditions. Through strategies such as geographic diversification, supplier risk management, flexible transportation, and cybersecurity, companies can reduce vulnerabilities and maintain continuity in the face of disruptions. Real-world examples from companies like Apple, Amazon, and FedEx illustrate how proactive risk management supports smooth logistics operations, controls costs, and safeguards customer satisfaction. Effective risk management builds resilience, ensuring that logistics networks can adapt to challenges and continue to meet organizational objectives and customer needs. Let's take a small practice test for Section B. 1. Why is identifying key risks essential in logistics networks? A. To predict customer demand. B. To recognize vulnerabilities that could disrupt operations. C. To improve product design. D. To reduce inventory. Correct answer. B. Explanation. Identifying key risks helps companies pinpoint vulnerabilities that could impact delivery schedules, 
costs, or service reliability. Two, how does risk assessment and prioritization benefit logistics networks? A, it limits the need for supplier diversification. B, it focuses resources on the most significant threats. C, it reduces inventory holding. D, it eliminates transportation needs. Correct answer, B. Explanation. By assessing and prioritizing risks, companies allocate resources to mitigate the most impactful threats, ensuring efficient risk management. Three, what is the primary goal of building a resilient supply chain? A, to increase production levels. B, to withstand or recover quickly from disruptions. C, to focus on marketing strategies. D, to minimize inventory costs. Correct answer, B. Explanation. Resilient supply chains are designed to handle or quickly recover from disruptions, ensuring continuity in operations. Four, how does geographic diversification of facilities support risk management? It centralizes inventory storage. B, it minimizes the impact of regional disruptions. C, it increases lead times. D, it limits customer reach. Correct answer B. Explanation. Geographic diversification reduces dependency on one region, lessening the impact of regional disruptions like natural disasters. Five, what is the purpose of inventory buffering in risk management? A, to avoid holding any extra stock. B, to provide a buffer during demand spikes or delays. C, to decrease supply chain resilience. D, to eliminate warehousing. Correct answer, B. Explanation, inventory buffering ensures companies can maintain operations during supply chain disruptions, minimizing stockouts and maintaining service levels. Six, how does flexible transportation support risk mitigation? It reduces inventory needs. B. It increases dependency on one carrier. C. It allows adaptation to transportation disruptions. D. It eliminates the need for warehousing. Correct answer C. Explanation. Flexible transportation allows companies to adapt quickly to carrier delays, route changes, or mode shifts, ensuring on-time delivery. 7. Why is real-time data important in risk monitoring? It increases manual tracking. B, it allows quick responses to potential disruptions. C, it reduces the need for inventory. D, it limits customer feedback. Correct answer B. Explanation. Real-time data enables companies to identify and respond to potential disruptions before they escalate, maintaining smooth operations. Eight. What is the role of contingency planning in risk management? A. It prepares companies for potential disruptions. B. It increases costs. C. It eliminates the need for technology. D. It reduces inventory levels only. Correct answer. A. Explanation. Contingency planning prepares logistics networks for disruptions ensuring alternative actions are available to maintain service levels. 9. Why is cybersecurity critical in logistics risk management? A. It limits supplier availability. B. It protects logistics data from cyber threats. C. It reduces the need for real-time data. D. It eliminates physical security requirements. Correct answer B. Explanation. Cybersecurity safeguards logistics networks from data breaches and cyber attacks, protecting operational data and continuity. 10. How does an organizational culture of risk awareness improve resilience? A. It reduces employee engagement. B. It limits decision making. C. It encourages proactive risk identification. D. It increases inventory costs. Correct answer C. Explanation. A risk-aware culture empowers employees to identify risks early, enabling the organization to respond quickly and effectively to disruptions. Thanks so much for sticking with me until the end. I'm really glad to have you here. 
Don't forget to check the description below for links to all the study materials. You'll find everything you need to succeed. Also, be sure to watch the previous modules in the CLTD playlist and stay tuned for the next one. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps support the content and brings more valuable resources your way. Until next time, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next module.